this tube right here. Um, he's got the speaking valve on, and uh, the cuff has to be deflated. The reason the cuff is deflated, which a lot of you probably know, is if you put a speaking valve on, it's basically a one-way valve. And they call it a passenger valve or a speaking valve. Passenger is the guys that made it and have made a fortune with this little valve. Instead of using your finger like they used to in the back in the day, they probably talk, they go like this. Just kind of gross. I think I could be rich. <laughs> yeah. One little thing you know, set for life. So if the cuff's not deflated, they can breathe in, but it's a valve that shuts off when you exhale. So when you exhale, there's nowhere for it to go. So that's why it has to be deflated. And this gentleman is deflated all the time. All the time. Okay, yeah. cool. Which makes it nice. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about it days off inflated at night and uninflated during the day with the sun, so it's on all the time. So with the deflated, you can breathe in through the tube, you can breathe around the tube, and you can exhale around the tube. So that's why it's sometimes tough for people to cough and clear on their own totally, because they still gotta cough past basically your little finger. He's got a fairly strong cough, but his issues too is what does he do with it when he gets it up to here? You either have to swallow or spit. And that's usually what I was saying before is why they have to keep the tube if they don't spit or they don't swallow. And it sits there and they just re-aspirate. So that's when they need a little bit of help with the deep suction. So this gets you close to your normal airway. You can cough and clear some. Um, and beware, you never want to stand in front of the tube when you take the speaking valve off. Because when they cough, a lot of times they will come out. So sometimes I'll put like a towel on the chest. You know, and if I have gloves on, I'll even go like that when I pop it off. If you see your friends at the end of the bed, if you don't like them, don't tell them to move. <laughs> <laughs> tell them to move. You probably don't want to stay in there because people will be watching when you're doing the show or two and they'll be watching like that. It's probably not a good spot because if they're sitting up in the bed, it'll be pointing right at them. So when you pop that off, a lot of times they'll cough up a majority of what you need to suction. But still, there might be some they need to clear down there. The other thing that we do is saline jets. Now, you don't have to do this every time. If secretions are thick, it's hard not to do it. A lot of the nursing magazines that have come out over the years, there's an article that came out years ago now that'll say, don't wash, because you're going from dirty to clean. But the New England Journal of Medicine says if you don't lavage some, they don't get it cleared out. They have more instances of ammonia because it's just sitting there. So a little is okay. It doesn't have to be every time. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. Sometimes a few drops and get ready to catch it. So that's when you pop that out. Now the suctioning part. If you drop something on the floor, throw it away. It is sterile. <laughs> <laughs> but your kit, um, depending on the kit, there's all kinds of them. Some have boxes in them, some have the tray like this. And the ones with the tray um, is your water reservoir. You can pull the gloves out of here. And if you open them up, usually they'll give you a diagram of where the thumbs are supposed to be. And then you've got your tray here. Just sterile water. It's okay to put it right in there with it. So if we don't have the kits, what do we put the sterile water in then? Um, that's pretty tough. I know. Because if you're doing sterile technique without right. the kits and just the catheters. Are we going to be looking at getting kits? I don't, I asked and I don't, I don't know. I would check with them to see if they can get some kind of sterile. Okay. Water. Some of them are just a box. Okay. Yes, I've seen it's those. It's a collapsible box. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, you'll be getting a kit that works great, then they'll change your box to some flimsy thing. Mm -hmm. So, but we shouldn't really be putting it in like a plastic cup or something. If it's, if it's sterile, it's probably fine. But, I do know, not have these sterile bottles. <laughs> no, that's the, that's okay. the tough part. Okay. Um, sometimes in the, in the home, it, it becomes, especially if patients do it themselves, mm -hmm. it's more of a clean yeah. thing. For me, I'm all sterile. Yeah, yeah that's or, what you know, I was hoping she was going to be participating. Hmm? The new gentleman, I was hoping he was going to be that, participating. Yeah, that's, that's hit or miss. So you slip on your sterile gloves. 
after sanitizing your hands. And now your hands are both sterile. You grab your suction kit. Sorry if I make a mess here. And your sterile sterile. I usually wrap in all so that you're ready to hook up your suction tubing, which we don't have with us. But once you grab the suction tubing, this hand isn't clean anymore. So if you're left handed or right handed, it doesn't matter. Pop it on and you're ready to go. Now, I always keep my hands apart. Some people go like this, and it's easy to bounce into things, so just keep your hands apart. And when you're not suctioning, wrap it up so it's not bouncing into things. And with Annie, we can give her just a few drops. And then you go ahead and suction. And just a gentle hand until you hit resistance or you hit the corona. Some will cough, some won't. If you get a big cough before you hit resistance, that's fine. Just start suctioning on your way back. And usually it's intermittent. Um, you usually do it about like so. Um, and then you just slide your fingers until you get to your tip. The other thing that I see a lot of people do is they'll just come up like this and it's easy to bounce into stuff. If you do hit something, pitch it and grab another one. Like a buck, 80 for a kit. I don't know what you guys pay, mm -hmm. but it's cheaper than giving them an infection. Mm -hmm. Pitch it and grab another one, no big deal. And you just pass, you know, give them a few minutes in between. Okay, we're going to go down again. If they're not able to say if I feel clear or not, just go by how it sounds, not what you're getting. So you go down again, same thing. And you can use the same yep. thing? Yep. And just clear them out. In between, you can suction up a little saline, and even before you start, you can suction up a little bit to know that yeah, it's working, everything's good to go. Because there's nothing more frustrating than you go down, you have to suction, you're like, oop, I forgot to flip the machine around. So just clear it with that, and that's all the sterile water is for, is just making sure it's clear and that it's working. So you just go down, and usually any textbook is about 10 seconds. You just back up. Suction until you get to your tip. Once you're not getting much, you can wrap it, put the speaking valve back on, and then take your gloves over the top. So when you throw it in a trash can, somebody just going to walk by and catch it on their scrubs and take your name in vain. Um, the inner cannula itself usually is once once a shift, so about every 12 hours, we change that out. Um, you just pinch this tight. Like a clothespin. You guys are too young to know what a clothespin is. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but it just pops out and uh, you pinch it. Um, nice thing about having the cuff down on the patient is they shouldn't be coughing too much into here. Mm -hmm. So as long as the speaking mill's on, it should keep, and some stuff will get in there, but not a lot because it's closed off. It should be coming around the tooth. And maybe get some on the tip. Questions so far? Okay. Um, the trig dressings, usually there's a lot of different ones, but they all basically do the same thing. I always support the tube when I'm going to do anything because if I start pulling on it, it's going to make them cough. So I try to hold it steady and just ease off one side, ease off the other. You can always look at it and see if there's drainage, bleeding. Does it look funkier than it did the last time you worked with them? Um, same with your secretions, if you're suctioning and all of a sudden it's more of a, more yellow, more of it. it maybe it's not running temps yet, but it's something to note that you may need an antibiotic, give the doc a heads up. The temps maybe are coming down the road, but if you can start an oral antibiotic, it may keep them from getting worse and clear up. Let's see. So, and then you take um, sterile water and peroxide. It's about 3070. It was 50 50, but if you're a type A personality, you don't have to mark out so many cc's. Close is close enough. And then you just dip it in the peroxide and then you just kind of twirl and swirl away, sweep away. Most of the time, most of your stuff's going to be on the bottom. Maybe one on the top, two on the bottom. Typically, it'll take care of it. But if you're starting to see a lot of drainage, too, there could be something going on there. So that's um, and then you put a new dressing underneath. The same thing. I'll have 
notes on the course. <laughs> Cardinal rule. Just working on one side and working on the other. And then just working back and forth. Floats underneath. If you see any sores underneath the flange or anything, that's a good thing to keep an eye on. That's the other thing about the flex is the flange is a little different, so there should be less chance of uh, sores developing underneath. Him and the other patient are both fairly thin, so it's not as big an issue. But HMEs is another thing that you'll see coming with trach patients. And basically, HME is going to be when the cuff is inflated on some patients, and it just pops on like this. HME is a heat moisture exchanger. They also call it an artificial nose. Basically, it's just doing what your nose does when you breathe back through it causes humidity to help thin secretions. Um, our other patient is using an HME as on a room air as well. Um, helps keep secretions thin. Um, another medication that she's getting, they started rolling out that'll help with oral secretions, help to dry them out so we don't help them getting as much stuff. Um, but this is usually changed in but if there's stuff that gets up in there, it needs to be changed more often. It's usually changed daily? Yeah. So it's that? Okay. And if there's stuff in there, sometimes you have to change you can't clean it really because it's paper. So once it's wet or full of stuff, basically needs to be changed. So it does have a little port you can hook oxygen on on this style, but a lot of times we use what's called an O-ring. So the nice thing about the O-ring is you can pop the speaking valve right on there too. So if you have a patient that needs oxygen, it's just regular oxygen tube and cut off, slips on there. It slips on the sun. Yeah, there's a little port right on the edge there. Okay. So oxygen will be hooked on there. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that as well. Is there an inner cannula with the speaking valve? Or no? no? Inner cannula is just on its own. It's a very simple thing. It's just a mm -hmm. little flapping one way valve if you want to take a look at it. So there won't be an inner cannula besides this part? Yeah. This is the only oh, so there's one inside there. Yeah. And the speaking valve just pops right on it. So are we replacing the whole inner cannula every day, or? Yeah, mm -hmm. usually once a shift. Like we're not cleaning it, and. They're just okay. They're, no, not the ones. Yeah, we get set up right now, so we replace it. Okay. Yeah. You know, if you're going through a lot of them, sometimes we would clean them all, but most of the time, because manufacturers say, "Oh, throw them every time," but you can't okay. clean them. So, um, the gentleman we have now, he uses oxygen at night sometimes, so then we would put that valve on and yeah. put the oxygen on Just there. a little adapter. Okay. And it pops on there and the speaking valve just sits right on top. He has it on right now? Oh. Okay. So, yeah, usually during the day he was okay. It just depends on... But you said we should change those like daily too. The HME usually. Well, the HME, not that one though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the inner cannula was. Yes, and then yes. The, and this little adapter here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pass that around too. What was that adapter? HME. That's the heat, heat moisture exchanger. This is called an O-ring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the next one that's coming has a, a cupped trach on the time. So yes, she's using. using fire. Yeah, so yeah. she's using that. And if you want to pass this around, that's what this is the XLT. None of the patients have them, but that's a pretty common tube that we use as well. Disposable in our cannula again. Okay, so what if they do nebulizer treatments? Okay, I didn't bring a tray collar with me, but that's I sent one with them. Yeah. It's just that little mask, it's about well shaped like that. I and saw it, it in the room, right so maybe this. we can go look at some of those yeah, things. And we can too. swing by yeah. this room, but it sits uh -huh. right over the top of here and you take your speaking valve off. And usually that's a good time. Either you pop the speaking valve off, you don't need to be suctioned very thin, or else afterwards to clear them as well. Is it better to wait till after the treatment? Does that make it easier, or does it? Sometimes the humidity from the treatment helps loosen stuff up, so if you pop it off, you don't hear much. It's probably fine to wait until after the treatment. Um, okay. Some say suction before and then run the treatment because then you're not well, suctioning. If you pop it off and he's rolling, you're going to need to suction. Yeah, right there. There. yeah. There's really no rider. Suctioning, everybody has a little different technique as long as you stay sterile. 
Okay. That's good. Okay. Any questions on anything else? How are cannulas? Do they have to be changed? They're changed about every two to three months. I think it's three months is what Ron said for this facility, which is pretty normal. Okay. Um, we do it every 30 days. That's why I always say per position order or whatever they want to want to do. Um, it can be changed more often. If you've got somebody that needs to cough up all the time and all of a sudden it's not holding air, then it's probably going to need to be changed soon. Okay. Um, for him, you probably want to know because it's deflated all the time. One thing that can happen, though, is if it won't stay deflated all the way, sometimes the cough the, will develop a hole somewhere in here. And it'll reinflate a little bit. If that's happening, you may need a sooner change too. Okay. The trade ties themselves, um, they can be changed weekly or whatever works. I think there's a setup weekly. Yeah. They can be washed. Um, if you guys have laundry facilities, most of us don't, so we just change them. Um, if they get soiled, they can be changed. The one thing that when you take these off to watch for is when you slip them off, if you look at the back side, you see any blood or anything, it could be a wound developing on the back of the neck. Okay. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on too. Anytime you see blood, it's worth investing in the back of the neck. Um, I haven't seen any issues with the two that we're looking at. But. So when they change, when we change those, is it easier to do it when you're changing the dressing also or just? Yeah, typically, because um, if you have the dressing out, it's easier to get underneath here. Okay. A little less. And I didn't bring a second one with me, I don't think. But a trick that I do is, is usually you have to keep one hand on here. But if you take your new tie and you just hook it to the Velcro, and then just slide it through, then you don't have to sneak underneath necks and stuff. You just slide it through. Oh, you mean the other one's still, still on. on? Like it's underneath okay. like this. Yeah. Hook your new, new one's Velcro to here, and then just slide it through. have to practice with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Some patients are good, like like he gets up in the chair and stuff. You can yeah, do, you can do all this while they're sitting up and mm -hmm. stuff too, it's fine. Um, so it's easy to get so it back in the neck, but if somebody that's not moving around with sometimes it's easier rather than trying to get under the neck just to slide it mm -hmm. And then uh, um, the ear and the cuff is usually about 10 mils will fill up a little. Okay. It doesn't have to be taunt taunt, because depending on the airway, some some need the full amount, and, and just feeling what it feels like. It's real taunt, you don't want a real taunt. If you've got somebody that needs their cuff up all the time, and all of a sudden while you're suctioning, 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 check your pilot. If they get a little low, sometimes it starts sliding down. Instead of suctioning their mouth, you're deep suctioning more frequently. Add like a mill to it, and see if it's down. That's okay. the first thing I check in. Any time I work the floor, I said, this is going to suction in every hour last night. I'll go in and check the balloon. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Um, so that'll save you some long days. <laughs> okay, any other questions? You guys want to try the gloves on? They got extra kits, or you can save them for the patients at home. I'm good, thank you. And I think we were looking at possibly going down to his room if you guys want to go down there. Yeah, that'd be good. Yes, uh, we have a lot of stuff in there, and I know it was like a list of stuff we need, but I know some of it is kind of everybody's trying to figure out the best way to work and how we're using it. So.